Panama Lewis, Luis Resto, and Billy Collins on June 18, 1983. Resto won a, a unanimous decision over Collins at Madison Square Garden. Thereafter, it was determined that in the dressing room before the fight, Lewis had removed padding from the striking surface of the fighter's gloves. Collins suffered serious eye damage in the fight, never fought again, and died in a car wreck nine months later. Resto and Lewis were criminally convicted, imprisoned for several years, and banned from boxing for life. Okay, a lot of people compare the the Margarito hand wrap situation to those two guys. Uh, basically, they removed the padding. They didn't they didn't put in a you know a strike plate as I call it. They they just removed the padding. So. Uh, but look, today, look, I want to go back to 2009, to the Margarito Mosley fight. Uh, and, and I know a lot of you guys out there ha have heard of this, and, you know, you're 100% aware, uh, aware of what happened. But, you know, I've done a lot of homework and a lot of digging around, and, you know, it's something I've always wanted to talk about. And really, I, I've talked about it in my Facebook group, but, uh, you know, never on YouTube. So, like I said, I want to go back to 2008, and then we'll get into the Kodo fight, in, uh, or I'm sorry, 2009, then we'll get into Kodo 2008. Okay, and I'm going to be reading a little bit of uh, what, what, what a certain journalist wrote, and then I'll give you my own opinions along the way. All right, here we go. A fighter's fist are the weapons tampering with <clears throat> with a fighter's gloved fist is one of the, the worst offenses imaginable in boxing it subverts the notion of a fair fight and puts the opposing fighter at exceptionally greater risk of serious death or injury on january 24th 2009 antonio margarito fought shane mosley at the staples center in los angeles in the dressing room prior to the fight an illegal insert was found in each of Mar Margarito's knuckle pads. The inserts were removed, and the fight proceeded as planned. Mosley knocked Margarito out in the ninth round. Now, let me let me jump in here real quick and tell you, you know, when we wrap hands, we you, we, I, we use the 180 inch wrap. They're longer. We don't we don't like the 108. We go four times around the wrist, four times around the knuckle. Then we go back to the wrist. And then basically we zigzag through the fingers and you can make an X at the palm. But somewhere in the middle of all that, you put a you put a a pad on your knuckle. OK, a lot of guys use gauze. I've seen guys use toilet paper. You know, it's just a way to protect your knuckle. Uh, and, and then you continue wrapping uh, the gauze and the hand wrap and the tape around it. And that's how that's why you see that big bulgy, you know, bump on a fighter's knuckles. Well, in this situation here, something different was used. OK, it wasn't gauze, you know, and, and first of all, there's a list of approved items by every every commission in this state the california athletic state commission there's a list you know of what they will approve and not approve okay all right margarito's license was subsequ subsequently revoked by the california state athletic athletic commission on august 18th uh the california state athletic commission will consider his application for reinstatement this is uh, this is expected to open the door for a proposed November 13th fight between Mar Margarito and Manny Pacquiao. So if you guys remember, you know, right after that, they were trying to negotiate the Pacquiao-Margarito fight. And, you know, Pacquiao weighed in on it, and he was like, you know, how did he not know his hands were wrapped? Like, how, how the hell do you not know that? But we'll get into this. I'm going to give you both sides. I'm going to defend him, and I'm going to tear him apart. Oh, big, and, 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 and then at the end, I'll tell you what I really think, all right? <clears throat> so it, it kind of goes two ways. All right, there has been considerable debate the past 18 months regarding the Margarito hand wrap issue, but the lines have been blurred by inaccurate reporting and the tendency of some observers, observers to take sides based on their fondness of a, of a certain fighter. You know, basically, you know, people take sides. It, it, it's who, if you like them, you defend them. If you don't like them, you know, you say he's guilty is what they're trying to say. Okay, let's put the nonsense aside and view the Margarito hand wrap issue in perspective. Okay, and that's what I'd like to do. The taping of a fighter's hands first begins with a roll of gauze being wrapped several times around his hand, then a pad then a pad that has been previously fashioned, okay, that's important to remember, it's been previously made from multiple layers of gauze is placed over the fighter's knuckles. 
that's followed by the application of more more gauze and tape. California rules allows allow for the use of gauze and surgical adhesive tape when wrapping a fighter's hands. Nothing else. Okay, nothing else. The application of water or any other liquid to the gauze is strictly prohibited. Margarito's hands were wrapped in the dressing room prior to the Mosley fight by his longtime trainer, uh, Capitillo. The task began under the supervision of Inspector Chief Guerrera and Nassim Richardson, Mosley's trainer, looking on. Before a big fight, Richardson usually objects to the manner in which an opponent's hands are being taped, if for no other reason than to upset the opposing fighter. Here, he logged numerous objections to the taping of Margarito's right hand. Several more inspectors, including Inspector Don Lewis, came into the dressing room. Richardson's objections were overruled. So basically, Nassim Richardson, he was objecting to the hand wraps and then... It, it was they it was overruled you know he just said uh you know no they look fine to me and we're going to continue okay then capitillo began taping margarito's left hand and richardson asked if he could physically inspect the knuckle pad lewis instructed capitillo to pass the pad to richardson nasim felt felt it and said that it seemed unusually hard he then handed the pad to Lewis, who agreed that it felt stiffer than normal Normal in this case. Okay, California State Athletic Inspector David Peretta, who was in the room, later testified, Nassim opened the gauze and pulled something out of it. He showed us what appeared to be an old gauze, which had been used and hardened from perhaps being sweaty and wet many times. Okay, so at this point, the right hand is already taped okay the right hand is already done and now you see here the left hand is being taped and he says now wait a minute I want to see that knuckle pad before you put it on his left hand I want to get a good look at that knuckle pad he looked at it it was still a little bit wet and mushy it hadn't it hadn't totally dried and hardened because that's what plaster does you know once wet it dries and hardens but in this situation in this particular case they were using an old plaster and we'll get to that in a minute so you know maybe they put something new over it as well and then they were going to shoot some water down his hand during the fight and get it to harden because uh, they're you know they have a lot of this quick set plaster where once you, hit, you basically when you put water on it within 30 seconds it's rock hard okay you can go to your local Home Depot or Hobby Lobby and it's not hard to find okay <clears throat> so uh, Inspector Guerrero testified. The knuckle pad was a clean new bandage, but within it, in the in the inner layers of it, was another bandage wrap. It was not as white as the new bandage wrap would be. It was used, and it looked almost like it had it was soaked in sweat, and that's what caused it to have the discoloration. It was harder in certain areas than it should be for pure gauze. Uh, it was definitely firm and hard. I believe there was a little, I believe there was a little bit of what looked like old blood on it. Now that's another interesting thing that I want you guys to remember. The inspector saying it, it had some discoloration. It was, it was hard in this spot, kind of soft over here, but it looked like it had a little bit of dry blood on it. Now remember this is 2009. So what I think happened, I think that they probably used the same inserts from the Kodo fight because it had old it looked old okay and they said it looked like it had old blood on it and i think in 2009 they still had the same illegal inserts from 2008 Kodo fight that's my own theory but you guys can you know make your own conclusions okay uh, Mike Bray, an inspector who entered the dressing room during the dispute, recalled, I observed what appeared to be a blood stain on the corner of the pad. I also noticed that it was moist and dirty looking. The pad, the pad had the appearance that it had been used before. After looking at the pad closer, I could see a white substance smeared, the, smeared on the face of the pad and into the gauze. I touched the white substance and it was hard to the touch. It looked like a cast plaster or maybe a thicker type of white out a uh, thicker type of white out that you could put on paper. Okay, so they're trying to figure out what what is on the damn wrap. Okay, um 
Lewis confiscated the knuckle pad and then instructed Capitillo to make a new one. Capitillo did so and wrapped Margarito's left hand. Richard then asked inspectors to examine the knuckle pad on Margarito's already wrapped right hand. So at this point, he had basically, you know, they made him rewrap the left, but he already had the right. So now they're asking, we want to look at the right. Lewis instructed Capitillo to remove the right, the right hand wrap and a similar insert was discovered inside the pad. Louis, Louis confiscated the pad as well and ordered Capitillo to prepare, prepare a new right-hand knuckle pad. I mean, this, this is crazy, man. This is like, you know, it's unbelievable. After the pads were confiscated, Mike Bray, at Richardson's request, brought them to Mosley's dressing room where three members of Mosley's team were allowed to touch them under the inspector's supervision. So now you got to think. Now they're, they're, they brought the pads over to Mosley's team in his locker room and... They're all checking them out, okay? And here's this coach right here. So you can imagine, you know, what it was like in Mosley's dressing room, okay? Let me get to a picture here. Yeah, here we go. <clears throat> and, and, and I'll get to what this picture here is very important, and I'll get to the significance of that picture in just a minute, Okay. Um, so now just to get back to what's going on, they brought the pads over to Shane Mosley's dressing room and you know, you got Mosley and Nassim and his whole team, they're all checking them out. Okay. Uh, after the pads were confiscated, Mike Bray, okay, we'll get back to that, brought them to, to Mosley's dressing room where three members of Mosley's team were allowed to touch them under the inspector's supervision. An undetermined number of commission personnel also touched them. Three days after the fight, the, uh, the California State Athletic Commission temp temporarily suspended Margarito's boxing license and Capitillo's trainer's license to set a February 10th, 2009 Basically, they wanted to set a hearing for both men, okay? Capitillo testified, and, and I'm about to end it right here after the testimony. Capitillo testified at the hearing that he prepared Margarito's knuckle pads in the dressing room at the Staples Center and put them on top of the contents in the trainer's bag. So basically, he's saying that he got the knuckle pads or he prepared the knuckle pads in the dressing room at the Staples Center and then put put them on top of of the contents in his trainer's bag. Okay, so he threw them in the bag. Then when then it was then when it was time to wrap, he pulled the wrong knuckle pads out of his bag by mistake. Okay? So this is what he's claiming. He's claiming that he prepared two new knuckle pads, threw them in his bag. All right, let's go. Then when he reached in to grab the knuckle pads to wrap Margarito's hands for the Mosley fight, he accidentally grabbed the hard pads. Now, first of all, why in the hell would he even have plastered knuckle pads in his bag any damn way, right? He further testified that the confiscated pads had most likely been used by another boxer while hitting the heavy bag in the gym. <laughs> okay, again, again, I, I've been in gyms my whole life. I've never even heard of that. What's the point? If you guys know, let me know. Uh, they just throw, and this is Capitillo speaking here, his trainer. They just throw things in my bag, Capitillo told the commission. The following, uh, exemplifies his testimony okay here's his, here's what he said question is this the kind of pad you usually use in a championship fight capitillo no sir question have you ever used a pad like that in in a professional boxing fight capitillo no sir question so it is your testimony that when you wrapped Mr. Margarito's hands, you reached into your training bag and grabbed the wrong pad. Capitillo, that is correct. I put my hand in the bag to pull out. They are like little pads, and by mistake that I had those in my bag. I put them on and wrapped them without realizing that I put the wrong pads on by mistake. <laughs> Okay, and then it then it goes on to say uh, there was no direct evidence that Margarito knew about the insert inside the knuckle pads only <clears throat> only interface. Antonio denied any knowledge of the inserts, and Capitillo testified, "I I commit 
I committed a big mistake, and I acknowledge it. I don't want this young man to have any problems because it's not his fault. He didn't realize what I put on his hands. Okay, so let me just stop right there. And and, and I there's so much more I could read you, but that's that's kind of the the important part. Okay, now this is when immediately after that, okay, now remember that was 2009. Then he went on to Mexico to fight Robert Garcia and where he won a fight in 2010. 2010, he also fought Manny Pacquiao, got the hell beat out of him. And then let's go to 2011, the Miguel Cotto Margarito rematch. Okay, so into the buildup of the fight, here you have Miguel Cotto, you know, saying, hey, Look at, I mean, look at, he, he's basically showing, these are pictures of, from the Kodo fight. So all the pictures that was used in the trial, you know, for the Shane Mosley incident were pictures taken from the Kodo fight. And a lot of people don't understand that, okay? He got busted during Mosley, but these pictures that you're looking at right now, it's from Margarito Kodo. You know, so and and then he still denies it. Margarito just still constantly denies it and denies it and denies it that you know they did not use. And here's him looking at a picture like, oh, I don't, I, what am I looking at? I'm confused. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, uh, and then here he goes. The HBO 24 Face Off. Uh, Max Kellerman is saying, look, you know, Cotto's showing you pictures right here. He's showing you pictures of the plaster. Uh, and then he, you know, of course he just he's just denying it. I mean, he's like caught red-handed and just deny, deny, deny. Okay. So and here's the rematch. I mean, we all know that uh, you know, Koto beat him rematch. <clears throat> got he got his revenge, you know, whatever, avenged his loss. And then in the build up to the fight, Margarita was like, Well, there's no way he's gonna beat me again. I'm gonna prove to everyone you know, prove to everyone that I'm a great fighter. I can easily beat him again. But I think it's funny that uh, after, you know, after basically they uh, he got caught, he started losing. Okay, and a lot of people say that he lost to Cotto because Manny Pacquiao messed up his eye. You know, maybe that had a little bit to do with it. But here's something I don't like here. Here you see Robert Garcia, uh, Robert Garcia and Margarito. You know, he's pretending like he's wrapping a, a brick on his hand. And Margarito's like, oh, I'm not looking. I don't know what you're doing. Ha, ha, ha. I'm innocent. You know, making a joke out of it. You know, you know so for that alone, just for that reason alone right here, whether you think he's guilty or not, I mean, this shit isn't funny. You know, people died in the ring because of this. And uh, not only that, think about this. What if Nassim, what if he didn't catch him? Think about it. Uh, I, I think Shane, Shane Mosley probably be in a coma. I mean, he could have died. You know, it could have ended his career right there. I mean, think about that because Mosley's, a, you know, a different fighter than, than Cotto. Man, Cotto's a tough dude, okay? And and that's a, a, one reason I'm going to make a video on Miguel Cotto today or tonight, maybe tomorrow, pretty soon, uh, about what's going on with him. But uh, I think if they wouldn't have caught Margarito, that he probably would have killed Shane Mosley in that ring, okay? So anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. I mean, what what do you think? Give me your thoughts. Um, I think, like I said, I'd give you my opinion at the end of the video. I think he's incredibly guilty. There's no way in hell he didn't know those hand wraps were in there. And uh, it's, it's just ridiculous that, that he didn't know. I mean... You know, I've wrapped my hands a hundred times. I've wrapped other guys' hands. You can number one, you can feel it. Let's say, you know, somehow the, the, your 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 uh, trainer did some sleight of hand bullshit, and you know, quickly, you know, wrap gauze around it. And you just didn't see it. You could feel it. You can still feel it. You can tell. You know. But not only that. You know, he knew. I mean, he knew. And then I know a lot of people are going to say, well, you know, he's he's surrounded by, you know, 10 people here and no one caught it except for one person. Meaning if nine people didn't catch it, maybe Margarito didn't catch it because you got to remember there was only one person that caught it in the room. And that was Nassim Richardson. So, you know, maybe he didn't see it, you know, but in my opinion, he knew. And, and, you know, maybe he didn't see it in this particular, you know, maybe he didn't see it, but he, he knew it was going on. That's what I think. Whether he's whether he actually physically watched him do it before the Mosley fight or not, he knew that he was going to have plastered inserts. And by the way, let me end with a little bit of evidence. Now, that picture of the little white baggie I showed you. 
they had the hand wrap tested, okay? For all the people out there that like to say that, you know, it wasn't plaster, it was tested in a lab, and it was 100% plaster. It had every chemical makeup and compound that plaster has, okay? So it was plaster. Like that, that little bag and the little black dots you were looking at, here, fuck, I'll just show you real quick. Uh, right here, they're showing you these little black dots over here. These, That's the chemical makeup of plaster. That's what those are. So, like I said, it was tested in a lab and found to be plaster. It was, it was basically a quick set plaster that, that hardens immediately, like I, like I told you in the beginning. So, anyway, guys, leave your comment below. What do you think?